share this. Can you see my screen? Okay, great. As as you've mentioned, Yavir, um, the obviously a, a, a well, I'm going to say an introduction of, of myself and Abhijit. Um, so the next slide would be obviously from from a Finerac point of view and Mifos. Um, this is a team that's obviously spearheading AI for all working groups, uh, while the members and obviously you can see there's Lalit. Um, he's got his doctor's degree in in in. Um, in um he's got his phd degree obviously i've got my master of science paul ashish abhijit ed alex and shita shitanya those are basically that's a team that's that's um that's spearheading the ai for for uh, mifos and finaract and that's just a, a, a just a few uh, just images to show you of, of who they are then ai for all revisit uh, well ai for all revisited why data science matters so from a brick and mortar to, to digital, if you look at near, which is which is near banks, um, there's been analysis done that they say that um, the the experts estimate, estimate that AI will save the banking industry roughly one one trillion dollars by 2030. Um, and the, and the reason for that is if you look at your your, your brick and mortar banks, um, they starting to they starting to fade away. Um, typical example in South Africa, that they're going a lot more digital, and obviously the neo bank. And and in that regard, there's there's a lot of branches that are actually closing down um, in South Africa and and obviously the rest of the world. And in saying that, um, self driving finance is obviously the future, where people go online, do their banking online. People can do obviously with 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 banking mobile apps. Um, People can access their banking from from their from their smartphones. Hence, um, saying self-driving finance future customers experience will be uh, centered around AI by enhancing efficiency and automation. Um, with that being said, using using um, your smartphone and incorporating AI, a lot of the features can be automated um, using using the data that's obviously available. But, as mentioned, with the rise of IoT, there are a lot more data lakes to tap into, achieve new insights, and create more profitable business models. So, in saying that, if you, from from a from a bank's point of view, a neo bank, you don't need a hundred branches anymore. You can do put everything in the cloud, and um, you can run obviously your 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 whole your whole infrastructure can run, can run from the cloud. And by using AI and, and and making a lot of the features automated like bank statement analysis and things like that, which we'll obviously talk about a little bit later, that obviously uh, enhances that process. Hence, RPA-based system. So instead of having somebody do the repetitive task, you can get the AI to do that for you. And and um, and that will also help in that regard. So I see Abhijit has joined. I think he'll take, take, to take on from you. Um, and yes. <laughs> Hi, Jeremy, am I audible? Um, is my screen visible? Yes, it's showing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, last year we have, uh, we have, uh, proposed, a com the following components. So everything from what happens on cloud, uh, are on premise, like from the databases, virtual machines, the Docker containers. And on top of that, we'll be having, we'll be uh, leveraging all these data points and uh, building machine learning rule based uh, approaches, supervised learning, and whatnot. Uh, and uh, there are some uh, components that we propose that we would be creating, uh, like the chatbot, the advisories, the risk management, and the operational activities. So, uh, what have we been doing from last year? This was just a revision of what the say the talk that we gave last year. So we have come up with a white paper that in, that introduces like uh, the use cases for AI and microfinance and community banks. So AI has been expanding in a diverse set of fields, and fintech is not different. Uh, AI for all represents my first strategic initiative and forward-looking roadmaps for data science efforts around artificial intelligence, machine learning. And for use cases powered by the solution built on top of MyFirst as well as FinRap. 
So uh, some of the use cases that we have been explicitly focusing on are cash flow prediction, uh, credit scoring, spend analysis, fraud detection, and much more. So uh, the principles on which MyForce is trying to uh, use AI is mainly explainability. So uh, as you know, uh, finance, uh, the data points, we, 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 we know AI as a black box. And without completely understanding what it does, it's not uh, completely trustworthy to go ahead and use it. So we, uh, we will be putting most of our efforts into using explainable AI and uh, I try uh, to figure out like how, what are these techniques, how are they working under the hood so that it's trustable by the uh, financial institutions. Next challenge we have is uh, security. And uh, most financial institution does not stay, uh, share the data between institutions for the reasons varying from privacy, uh, sovereignty, and the cost of actually moving the data. So generally the data is stored within the banks and training a model with this limited data set is not so good. And it would not be a perfect representation for the model itself with the given set of data. So we are looking into federated learning approaches, uh, which we could actually uh, uh, take advantage of and uh, have the model train in multiple places, and but have the uh, usability of all these models together. Another thing, we were, uh, the principal driving behind my process use of AI is democratized learning. So making AI, that is both the action of development of AI accessible to everyone. This is an essential uh, step in pushing bleeding edge technology. The my first community along with other open source communities are working together to de develop solutions using AI in the right, uh, which is the right step in the direction to make these models available to everyone. Uh, some of the use cases that we have been looking, which we could uh, start with the implementation uh, on uh, this year uh, are uh, credit scoring, uh, fraud detection, virtual assistance, product recommendation and campaign management, NPA management, uh, lending and loan management, loan underwriting, early warning systems, and language translations. Uh, so uh, th this is basically a research that we did looking at the current uh, FINRAC platforms and uh, as well as the MyForce implementation and uh, figuring out, OK, what are, what are some of these data points we can leverage? And what are some of the immediate uh, solutions we could deliver? Uh, speaking about which, uh, these are the three current open source tools that are developed by the community, the credit scoring uh, scorecard, the chatbot, and Vision PPI. Let's start off with the chatbot. Uh, the chatbot application allows the users to directly interact with the Finerac platform. Why is this important? Because many of the users today, chat is a more familiar form of user interface for them. And it would be valuable to provide an extensible chatbot that connects directly to MyFoss and Finerac. Uh, the uh, chatbot is currently integrated to Slack, Telegram, and Facebook Messenger. And we will obviously be looking into integrating into much more diverse platforms. Uh, the modules that are in the chatbot is obviously the server that has the Spring application co uh, configured with properties of the protocol module and the adapter module. So what is this adapter module I talked about? Well, this is a module that handles which uh, request is coming in from the protocol module and returns the MyFoss response, uh, response back to the protocol module. The client module, whereas, uh, is responsible for handling client requests, obviously, and uh, communicate with the Finrac API and generate and return MyFoss uh, responses back to the adapter module. Um, then we have the core module, which is the skeleton of the application. It provides us all the NLP services, chat services, adapter services, intent, and small ta uh, talk relatives, and defines the module. Then we have the NLP module, which we have used Rasa NLU to as a trainer. We have the protocol that integrates with all these chat platforms I've been talking about. And finally, the database, which provides the authentication uh, uh, for storing the user information in the database. Now let's look at the credit scoring. Uh, so the uh, credit scoring is a statistical analysis performed by lenders and financial institutions to determine the credit worthiness of a person or a small operate, operation business. So FINRA credit scoring currently has three implementations, a rule-based, statistical, and a machine learning. I'll be talking about in a much bigger detail about this uh, uh, in a few minutes. 
uh, the scorecard has been uh, adapted, uh, has been fully equipped to deal with a different source of data, whether be it JSON, XML, SQL. Uh, this credit scoring application is extended to support all this. Uh, finally, this summer, uh, during Google Summer of Code, we have adapted, uh, we have successfully adapted credit scoring module uh, to be to be the used uh, by uh, our RESTful APIs. Uh, this module is written in Django with a Java SDK and Fundrat plugin. Next, we have the Vision PPI. So PPI is a measure, the poverty probability index measure for organizations and uh, businesses that uh, has the mission to serve the poor. So generally, uh, uh, PPI consists of 10 questions about the high household characteristics uh, using which the assets can uh, assets can be scored. And the likelihood of them being uh, in the poverty line could be uh, predicted. So leveraging Cloud Vision, a field officer would simply be able to uh, go to the uh, place where they have, where, go to the household where they have to assess the PPI, take a couple of photos uh, from inside and outside the house, and they will have a, a form based on this uh, photos to uh, fill. And they could easily assess the uh, PPI of the given person. Now let's uh, take a deeper look into the credit scoring application and what has been done over the summer. So first of all, uh, this is a screenshot directly from the MyFosix application and uh, web application. And we can see uh, after creating a, a, a scoring method, you can select which kind of scoring you want. Where should it be rule-based, statistical, or machine learning? So uh, after defining the rules, uh, let's say I went with a rule-based approach. After I can uh, define the rules, gender, age, purpose, credit amount, and so on. And then uh, we can create a loan product based on these rules. And uh, the uh, when a new customer comes in, uh, the, the the official can enter their enter their uh, these uh, values, and the the credit scoring uh, the score will be returned to them. Another approach is not to you go with a rule based approach. They can use a statistical approach. Uh, so in the start, we can choose um, uh, different kinds of statistical uh, scoring methods, uh, among which one is linear regression. And this is a scorecard uh, that is returned after doing a linear regression evaluation. Finally, we have the machine learning scorecard. Here, uh, you have a couple of features uh, from age, gender, and whatnot. And you can choose which, which kind of uh, machine learning method you need to use, random forest, gradient descent, SVC, or MLP and the credit score of the person is returned. So uh, last year, we had a timeline in place to talk about uh, the different methods that we'll be using, the different applications that we'll be delivering, and it has been delivered. So what is next for MyFOS? So the next step is federated learning. Why do we need to uh, adapt federated learning? Mostly because of the two main concerns, that is data privacy challenges and the limited data as customer-based services are relatively small. Uh, the picture here shows the taxonomy of how we are planning to use federated learning. And next, uh, I would uh, stop my uh, screen sharing, and um, Jeremy would be talking. OK, great. So obviously, taking to everything in consideration that Abhijit mentioned, we, we try to identify various use cases for AI in banking. Hence, if you look at the first slide, we said that um, people are moving away from brick and mortar and moving to, to neo-banking. And if you look at the three segments, front office, middle office, and back office, that, that actually ties in very well with, with, with the first slide, explaining where can, where can we use AI in, in banking. So if you look at the first slide, front office customer interface, authentication, identif identification of customer using biometrics, wealth management, personal insights. Um, that is uh, it's pretty much aimed at your, your onboarding process. Um, and, and, and your onboarding process, you can make very automated from an AI point of view. And I'll, I'll go into it a little bit more detail in the next slide. Middle office, obviously, fraud detection, know your customer, credit rating and loan decision, as Abhijit mentioned earlier on, um, getting your credit score using various algorithms. Um, and then obviously your back office business and strategy insights, simplifying back end, 
processes, RPA, regulatory compliance. Um, that obviously ties back in once again to the to the first slide, where um, mundane jobs that can be done via machine instead of somebody doing it um, would be a lot better. Obviously, there's cost reduction and all those kinds of things. So let's just go to the next slide. So looking at those three segments, um, just looking at, at, at the algorithms used in that scenario. So if you just look at your onboarding process, um, you could one, one, of the, one of the methodologies um, and which incorporates an algorithm is obviously your natural language processing, which uses the methodology, which is obviously TDIDF. And in, in layman's terms, it's, it's, it's called um, bag of words. So essentially what that does is the algorithm identifies you specific words in a corpus of text. And from that can identify obviously a numeric value and then we can use um, algorithms to then classify that. And hence the next uh, uh, comment, categorize bank statement spend. So using NLP, looking at a bank statement, the line item descriptions and, and using a um, bag of words, TDIDF or one hot encoding, you can then identify various um, like I said, text in that corpus and you can categorize it. So for instance, a perfect example would be um, debit order for gym. Um, from that, you can then categorize it as a debit order. And maybe if you're withdrawing from an ATM, um, you can then categorize that as a, a withdrawal. And by doing that, you can categorize spend. So you could then quantify grocery expenses, um, vehicle expenses, um, um, cell phone expenses, mobile phones expenses, and you can you can build up a huge list. Now, where that helps in in, in on your uh, typical example would be on your on your on your front front um, end in the previous slide would be on your onboarding process. So instead of somebody on the back office, and that ties back once again to the back office, you don't need somebody to go and analyze those bank statements to work out affordability and disposable income. The AI using NLP and, and um, a, a gradient boosted decision tree, which works very well in multi-classification, you could then use that and make that part of your AI pipe, pipeline, which then can do um, bank statement analysis and then can quantify uh, disposable uh, income and affordability. But as I didn't mention here, just to mention to you guys, is that to get that data into a digital format, you would obviously use OCR, optical character recognition, which is obviously based on neural networks. There's various ones you can use. The hype in the market right now is convolutional neural networks, which works very well. And then the other one is recurrent um, convolutional neural networks. Um, that's using that, that, that in totality, um, you can then you can onboard the client a lot quicker. So one of one of the use cases that we've done is using that technology and obviously the credit risk scoring, which I'll talk about now, we could we could identify or we could actually do a loan in about 10 to 15 minutes if all the data is available, if the client should upload their bank statements and and um, and those various things, you could you could make that onboarding process a lot quicker, hence better turnaround time, better customer service, etc. Now, from the credit risk scoring point of view, once again, a gradient boosted decision tree, but I'll talk about deep learning in the next slide, um, is very good, um, especially on binary classification. So if you look at, 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 at your, uh, your, 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 your loan scenario, for example, you would have either a person that defaults or you'd have a person that, is not a de that hasn't defaulted on the loan. Um, so that is a, a, a true or false. Using various attributes and, and, and features in your data set, you can then define if, if, if the person would obviously be good for a loan or not. Hence, as Abhijit um, mentioned earlier on, 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 on the credit scoring. So that will also alleviate that you don't need somebody to, 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 do, to do that, that um, analysis. You could actually use the AI, which would then define whether the person is good for the loan or not good for the loan. The next section, fraud detection. It pretty much speaks for itself. So what essentially what you would do there is you, you, you would have data that would come through, but by using clustering, which is which a support vector machine, is, is another form of clustering data. You can then pick up clustering people, their, their normal onboarding process, um, their normal um, using Google Analytics. You can use the flow of how people actually navigate on your website, etc., and you could cluster those people in various segments. And if somebody is doing something very arbitrary or very, very different, you could then using a, a, a cluster and, and obviously an algorithm like a support vector machine, you could then find the anomaly and then identify 
this is not normal process. This is not normal uh, navigation on the website. And, and this is, for example, purposes. You could then flag that as 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 a, as a possible fraud fraud detection. Okay. Then on the next slide, deep learning for credit scoring. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, a lot of the banks have got limited data or data sets available from, from a, a client's profile, hence age, um, place of, of, of where they live. What is their, um, if they plugged into a credit bureau, what is their credit score? Previous accounts, um, have they defaulted? Have they not defaulted? What's outstanding balance? So you've got very limited features attributes that you can use to train your models for your credit scoring. Now, in, in, in the recent times, guys, uh, institutions have been looking at using deep learning. And the reason for that is that using various other data lakes like um, social media, um, IoT, um, you know, apps on, on, on your phone, um, you know, things like that. There's more data lakes that you can tap into. And by doing that, you've got a lot of unstructured data. And that unstructured data does not will work well on a gradient boosted decision tree. Hence, guys are using deep learning because deep learning loves unstructured data and large data sets. And using that, you can then obviously enhance your credit scoring and you can make the bank that the unbanked banked. Um, typical example, if you look at agri-loans, um, you know, for farmers, in, in, especially in Africa, you've got all these uh, small holdings. These guys don't have... Um, they're not banked as such, but what they do have is that you can use other kinds of data sources to identify if you could if you could loan them money. Typical example: using um, uh, neural networks to define um, crop growth, um, image you know satellite imagery, um, and that is making the unbanked banked. And that is not your typical uh, data set that you would use at a normal bank. Um, where they use your age in that. You've got to obviously tap into a different data lake and create a different pipeline. So that is why the guys are starting to look at deep learning um, and incorporating that into, into their credit scoring and other, and, and, and other AI models. Um, hence, digital footprint, if you're using Facebook, um, you, Facebook has made it great that you can tap into to, to their, their platforms and you can get data from a person. You could use uh, Instagram, um, there's obviously, um, you know, if you if you've got mobile apps, you can you can identify certain things on the guys' mobile app like SMS integration, reading SMSs. Those are those are your not normal data data lake sources that you would normally use for a bank. And then, perfect example, what we mentioned is deep belief neural networks. So the reason why that is also a very good uh, deep learning algorithm is that it's actually two parts. So you've got the restricted Boltzmann machine, and then you've got your second phase, which is also neural network, which is fine tuning. And hence, uh, it's, a good, it's a possible good algorithm to use for deep learning is that because it's got two phases to it, you've got your restricted Boltzmann machine is a neural network that actually works out features. It identifies features in your data set. And once it's identified those features, it then goes to the next phase, which is your final tuning, which is a normal... A uh, four feet forward um, neural network, a single layer, and that then defines according to your labels what's using your features. Um, you, you you can train your models according to that to obviously define and depict um, your outcome going forward from there. So that's that's pretty, so in, in that scenario, you can see where the, the the need is for deep learning because we need to use data lakes, other data lakes, and it's a lot of unstructured large data sets. Which which haven't been tapped into, um, which which makes which 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 the, the institutions are looking at using deep learning. So um, the next slide will be obviously will be uh, Abhijit will carry on from here. Thank you very much. Uh, my screen is visible. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have a uh, some call to actions, uh, action items. Uh, so the first thing is uh, we invite any contributors to who 
like the moment, like the applications we are building to join our group, join our AI working group. Uh, we have a white paper in place. We have written the initial draft. We are looking for reviewers. Uh, so we welcome reviewers to the white paper as well. Uh, also, we would like uh, to know if there are any innovations or uh, any use cases for AI in banking that we have missed out. And obviously, uh, to contribute to our project, with the projects that we have in place right now, this credit scoring as well as the federated learning. Uh, finally, uh, thank you to everyone who's attended in this session. Uh, we will start taking questions now. Uh, the This is the link to join our uh, AI ML working group. I would put it in the chat as well. Uh, you may feel free to contact me, Jeremy, or Ed uh, regard, uh, regarding uh, any queries you have about the talk or about joining the AI ML working group or my first initiative. Thank you. Thank you. We can take any questions. So while while we're waiting for questions, um, uh, perfect. So I'll, I'll actually show you something um, in regards to how we could actually use um, AI to do your um, your credit scoring. Uh, not your credit scoring to do your bank statement analysis. And just a preview while we're waiting for questions. I'll, and using this this uh, this enhances the, the the automated process which I spoke about early on, and that's. Um, that makes your onboarding process a lot quicker and a lot more functional. And it and, and comes back to, to, to one of the, 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 the features in the first slide where we said self-service finance. Now, um, incorporating, I just want to I'll share my screen with you. And from that, you will be able to see, and I think a visual point of view will actually demonstrate it a lot better. So let's just go, yeah. This is obviously based on the Finerac um, platform and... Um, I'm going to share my screen now. So let's do this. Um, let me just share this. Can you see my screen? Okay, great. So this is this is based on on, on this has already been built into into the into the Finerac platform. So essentially, what we've done is we um, because it's, uh, we we've taken uh, the the. the the people, what they would do is, and this is obviously just for demo purposes, a, a person would up, up, upload their three um, their three months bank statements, and on those bank statements, you would see your tra your traditional line item descriptions, which would be card charge, bank charges, um, that's a purchase, um, track diamond, overdraft interest, um, FMB, which is a bank in South Africa, that's a NATO debit, um, absent bank credit transfer. Um, check card purchase, donations, um, salary, internet, credit transfer, um, th th that's th and uh, security. So using these line, these are actual line item descriptions that have been OCR off of the person's bank statements. And using that, what we did using AI, we then went and did ca categorization where we then can then define salary, the person pick up the person's salary. Um, yeah, vehicle expenses that's gone through, vehicle expenses, that's a NATO debit, agreement repayment, NATO debit. Um, in, in South Africa, this is this is debit orders that go off, off your bank account. Um, fuel expenses, this is obviously um, fuel that has been put into, into the vehicle. Grocery expenses, these are malls in South Africa. Um, credit payment to checkers, quick spa. So insurance expenses, this is an insurance company in South Africa. So there's obviously insurance premium that goes off every month. Um, rental expenses, subscription expenses. Now using this, and, and just, to, just, just to put into context, this has all been done through an AI model using language, uh, natural, uh, natural language processing, 
using a neural network to do OCR and extrapolate the data of the statements. Once it's done that, it then uses a gradient boosted decision tree, obviously using a bag of words methodology or TDIDF, depending on what you want to use, and then categorizes it into various classes. And from this, we can then define um, disposable income, affordability, etc. cetera. And, and just by doing this little bit um, on the onboarding process has reduced an um, uh, application for a loan by, I won't say hours, but literally days. If you look at your brick and mortar banks um, that are currently where somebody actually goes, analyzes um, the core func uh, the, the person's bank statements, goes to each line item description, works out affordability, works out if there's any disputes on the account, if there's any returned um, uh, debit orders, etc. cetera, and, and using that. And then obviously the second phase using the same data um, and, and the finding that there is disposable income which is available for a loan, will then use that and various other attributes um, to then obviously work out a credit, if the, the credit risk uh, um, per, per that person or their, their client that's onboarded. And then on the other end, we'll say, listen, you are good for a loan of so much over such a time period. And, and, and using, and obviously depending on the thresholds, um, Um, James, is, is, can, can you can you hear me? Um, I can hear just, you. Yep. Can you hear me? All yep, right, because right. James is saying that my audio is off. <laughs> okay, so the, the, um, James, can you hear me now? Ed, can, uh, Ed, can you hear me? Okay, great. So... So just by doing this first phase and then obviously incorporating the second phase, which Abhijit obviously showed you with the credit scoring and, and using various algorithms, um, you, can then, you can then define the loan, as I mentioned, over a certain time period and the amount. And obviously, depending on the thresholds that you set, which, 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 which we can discuss at a later stage, but there's various thresholds. And from that, we can then define, okay, this guy, according to the attributes, um, net salary, um, affordability. This person would be good for a loan of so much over such a, uh, over this term period, and that on its own is as as I mentioned just now reduces your loan onboarding process and loan application by it's 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 phenomenal. We've actually brought the loan process down to fifteen to twenty minutes um, using this AI technology and 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 pipeline, if you want to call it that, we've incorporated on our onboarding process. Um, so I thought I'd just show you that just that you've got a better visual understanding of what we mean by using AI to do bank statement analysis and obviously doing credit scoring um, in that regard. Any questions with, with in regards to this? Um, just on, on that, just uh, another, um, while we're waiting for more questions, is that we've also looked at from, as I mentioned, we use NLP to do um, to do our natural language processing and obviously identify um, various words in, in, in a line item description, which is a text corpus. We've actually started integrating um, using graph theory to, to define those words even more, but obviously you need a, a huge data set to train on that. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd just mention that as well. Charles, thanks guys for info. This this is great. Can you talk a bit more about the integration object to use and whether you considering approaches where someone could use third party solutions for some of these functions? Use use a consistent integration approach like API. So in in, in that regard, so what we've done is, and this is a perfect example, using the AI that I'm showing you now has been built as a separate microservice, but it's still incorporated into. And and just correct me if I if I'm answering the question incorrectly. But um, integrating third-party applications into the into the Finerac, um, um platform is actually is, is, is great, and that's one of the reasons why um, SoftyDoc went for for the Finer Finerac platform. And I'm going to show you something which is very very powerful. If you look at the, there's various 
if you we've got external APIs, as you mentioned, Charles. So our, our, our credit scoring, our AI models are obviously written in Python, which we've got in a different microservice, which is all this is all running on Kubernetes, which is running on a different microservice and is exposed as APIs. So while the onboarding process happens, there's various triggers that get fired, which you can obviously which you can create on, on, on standard on the on the Finerac platform, which makes it very powerful because it is an event driven. It's, it's, it's based on event driven design. Where um, so a typical example where we would do the the, the credit check. Um, this is an API that's external that we've obviously exposed as a microservice on our side. And using this, we can query our third party APIs to populate this table or um, get data from this table and doing integration like that. So to answer your question, it's very open in that regard and it's very powerful um, if, if you want to integrate third party APIs. Does that answer your question, um, Charles? Perfect. So yes, so as you can see, we've done this. We obviously, we, our AI models are also um, APIs that we expose because it's done in Python. Um, which when, when something when, when, when a certain function gets triggered in in Finerac, um, it then does has a webhook that that then calls our API to get various data. Any other questions? And and, and, and that's what makes 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 um, Finerac very powerful is that the when we, from an open source platform, Finerac is built in such a way and so dynamic. That you can you can plug in various um, technologies into it, and it literally from scratch from scratch as we say from zero to euro, Finerac makes it very possible for you, and you can just add onto it. So you've got you've got your core banking system, which is readily available for you, on, obviously on the open source platform, and you can just enhance it going from there. Um, this is Finerac one. Um, I think it's one point three, not one point four. But um, as as Abhijit showed you earlier on, he or he the, the credit scoring that was done there was done on CN, um, which is which is done so 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 Finerac um, version one up has been um, done in AngularJS, still using the same API core. Um, they're all still using the same API core, um, but just the front-end framework, the SPA, this one was done in um, AngularJS, and then the one that Abhijit showed you was, was done in Angular, um, the latest Angular, which used TypeScript. Does that help? Great. Any more questions? Okay. Okay, yes, as, as Ed mentioned, um, this is on AngularJS and CN is done on um, the latest Angular. Okay, I think that's it. Well, um, from Finerac, uh, uh, sorry. Well, from a load testing point of view, I think it depends on each 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 um, um, contributor that uses it for 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 on on, on their side. But um, from from a from a, a load testing point of view, we've got our whole infrastructure running on Kubernetes. Obviously, we've got the test environment, UAT environment, and um, we've got our production environment. But just to give an example, we're using a bank here in South Africa that um, is using this platform, which we've obviously enhanced for them, and they've got a loan book of about fifty-seven million rand. Um, I don't know what if you convert that to dollars. So the, the rand to the dollar is about 14 rand to one dollar. And the client base is about 3,000 loans. I do know, and it could obviously uh, elaborate more on this, but I do know that there's other institutions which are using Finerac 
have gone have gone higher. Well, applications per day. So if we take a tip on, we could have between 100, 200 applications per day on the loan side. Um, sometimes it's more, um, depending. Okay, great. It seems like we're running out of time. But thank you once again, everybody. Um, and yeah, if our details are on the slide. I think this is being recorded. Please reach out to us and we'll be more than willing to help you. Thank you, everyone.